Alright. So today on Newbie Bat, got a special guest. We got my girl, B Bad. What's up, what's up? So before we get into it, you're gonna have to tell me what B Bad. Like what made you come up with the name B Bad? Well, I'm a president of Beautiful American Divas. And it's a social club. Um, before that, I was in another club. And when we were first starting out, um, everyone's asking me what my name was. As a prospect, you can't really talk. But people had already knew me before I joined the set. So I was just telling them my name is B. I remember one time um, a dude asked me. He was like, B, what's the rest of the letters? And I'm like, it's just B. And then he was like, well, you got an attitude. Girl, you think you bad. And I was like, that's right. I'm B bad. And then exactly. stuck with it from there. Oh, that's what's up. Oh, okay. So that was up. That's a <laughs> unique story. That was up. Okay. All right. So you from Manhattan. Right. You from Tribeca. To be exact. Okay. okay. Triangle below canal. Okay. And that's um, how it was. Like, how old you was when you um, moved from Manhattan to Augusta? I mean, to Columbia. Well, I was 19. Well, the first time I left New York was during September 11th. Um, Ground Zero, all the area, that's where I'm from. So it was like bodies and stuff all over the place. So it was in your area? Right. So what? what you, remember, you remember that day? I do. Was um, day like? I, was, I was in school. The, the news was playing. They said it was going on or whatever. My little sister's school was right there. So if the towers would have fell straight down, it would have hit her school. So I remember my teacher telling me that my mom was coming to get me or whatever the case may be. They came and got me. And it was just, I was like stuck. I was numb. Like when I went home, it was like military people with big guns and stuff. You had to show your ID to get in there. And at that time, I didn't have an ID. So my mother had to talk for us. It was just really weird. And then you could see like the debris. You could see like all kind of stuff. It was just it was, it was weird. It was like almost like I was in a movie. Yeah, almost. Shit, it like a movie. They said they said the, the 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 chaos and the damage was like miles. Like it was like miles of debris everywhere. I want to say it stemmed from okay. So the World Trade Center is literally a fifteen minute walk from where I live. It went from there all the way. I want to say almost to beach street which is like getting closer to soho so it's like it's tribeca it's wall street tribeca where i'm from and then soho like it was affecting wall street it affected tribeca and it almost stemmed all the way up to soho so Damn. yeah it was like really like you were scared i bet y'all was scared as hell that whole day i didn't know what was what like i was i was just numb to the whole thing because i'm like I understood what was going on, but I didn't have a, I didn't know how to react. Because yeah. I'm used to stuff always happening in our neighborhood because celebrities live there. Um, John F. Kennedy, he had lived up the street from us. He had died. Like, I, it was just so much stuff that I could remember going on. So when this happened, it was just like, is this real? Like, I know it's real because everyone in school is panicking. It's on the news. But I live here. Why is this happening in my neighborhood? Like. Wow. Why is there always something happening in my neighborhood? So it was like super weird. So we came down south for a year. I always made straight A's. Always a good student. I went to Catholic school most of my life. So when I came down here and went to Catholic school, people was making fun of me because of the way I talk, because I like anime and stuff like that. So I was getting to a little scuffle. You're a big anime fan? I am. So what's your top five anime? I want to say My Academia Hero, okay. um, The Giver, which is super, I ain't super watched that old. I watched uh, My um, Hero, Hero Academia. Academia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Naruto, of course. Um, what's One Punch Man. Yeah, One Punch Man. And, hmm. You better not leave it out. I'm listening. I'm waiting. <laughs> and, um,. You said my top five. Now I watch all anime, yeah, but yeah, I'm talking about my top five. Um, ding. But this has to be, it has to be on everybody's list. Because nobody wouldn't, a lot of people in America wouldn't even know about anime. What you want me to say, Dragon Ball Z? Yes. That's not my top five. Uh, that is not your top five. Because <laughs> if, you if you ask any person that doesn't watch anime, what they say? Dragon Ball Z. Exactly. You, right. you got to put that on the list. Whether you like it or not, but you got to give us his props. You right. Yeah. You definitely right. I mean, I did grow up watching Dragon Ball Z, but it was just like a regular 
I guess because I watched it dubbed. If I would have watched it subbed, I would appreciate it more. Now, all of the stuff I watch now, I watch it subbed. Yeah. Dub anime for me is just like a disrespect to the Japanese culture because it's like this was made in Japan. You know, Japanese. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah cause a lot of people don't know that too back then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember when Dragon Ball first came. Well, uh, well, Dragon Ball first came down to the United States. You couldn't even understand what the hell they were saying. The only thing you heard was yelling and gang, gang, gang. <laughs> that's all you heard. And uh, then I started. That made me realize, okay, they got to be because I was into like Marvel, DC. You was mm-hmm. into those. Mm, you know, a little bit. Not a little bit. You ain't went into like the. Comics, you know. I mean? No, yeah, I was into the comics, but I wasn't I, not as much as I was into like like I was a real geek. Like I was trading Pokemon cards, Yu Gi Oh cards. Like I didn't want to tell y'all that, but yeah, I was I was in the back. You was trading Pokemon. I was cards. at the YMCA in summer camp. Like I got this this Charizard. What you got for this? Like you know what I'm saying? Like trading Pokemon cards. Like yeah. yeah. And see, see, <laughs> see, you think you think. Uh, so a lot of people don't understand, like, that's a whole world in by itself. It is. Like, anime and just, even just Pokemon, just anything in the anime, just like, if someone's a, a fan of that, it's a whole world of people that's just, you know, that just attracted to this same thing. That's right. Like, I was going to the little, um, damn, I might have looked like a super geek. I was going to the the cost Cosmicons in New York. I want to go there so bad. I was dressing up like was How good. Was it? I'm talking about like the litest experience. It's people from all around the world, and you just dress up, taking pictures. If your costume is bomb, you could win stuff, win money. Like it was, I felt at home. But then I was telling my hood friends about it, and it was like, girl, what? No, no, what the hell? Co- Comic Con, what, what? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> But um, that 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 creates a different personality for you. That what makes you stand out, right? You know what I'm saying? Because you, I feel like what makes you stand out. You gotta have different personalities than the normal. Then you'll just be the same as everybody else, right? You know what I'm saying? So don't I I say that geekness that you have don't hide. <laughs> just bring it out. It's hard to hide it now because <laughs> a lot of people are into anime now. So when people are talking to me about it, and I'm like, okay, did you watch this? And I'd be like, what? And I'd be like, oh, um, okay. Well. All right. Do you watch it subbed or dubbed? They be like, "What's that mean?" I be like, "Okay, um, all right." <laughs> right, right, right. So, do you scare off? It? I mean, do you, like, so you do you confuse a lot of like if you go date date a guy and y'all talk about say like you tell them that do you tell them that you into anime? Well, I have a tattoo on my leg right here. You can't see right now of a Leaf Village um headband from Naruto. So they'll be like, "Oh, what's that?" And I'll be like, "Um." You don't you don't watch anime not even a little bit so i'll show them the cartoon like i'll be dressed up real like whatever whatever and i'll be like you're into anime and i'll be like uh yeah right. like aren't you no right. okay i thought this was like, everybody's name everybody, right, <laughs> right, right. Exactly, exactly. okay okay all right so um you also did some acting Right. You did some acting. You did some acting in New York, or was it? And we got to the south. Well, I did like local stuff in New York because I went to LaGuardia Community College, and it's like a performing arts kind of college. So I did like little, you know, videos out there. But like seriously into my acting is when I came down here. Um, I'm on Columbia okay. season three. Shout, Shout out to Big Pa. Shout out. You know, and so that's. I gotta get, I gotta get an interview with them. Yes. I gotta, I, I'll come to Columbia and do that. Let so me I'll know so that. I can link you. Yeah. Um, So that was like a major... Now, I was doing a little other stuff, but that was like a major, major platform that I started on. And then I linked with Geechee One Films, and I did a few things with them as well. So I know Shout one of the... Felicia, that's my business partner. That's my partner, man. You know, yeah. that's my dog. Love yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, I love Felicia. That's my girl. She gets on my nerves. She gets me headache every night, <laughs> But that's my girl, man. Like I, 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 I rock with Felicia. Like we, we've been working for a long time, some years. So that's my, that's my dog. She makes me feel normal. Like a lot of times, people they'll ask me, like you know, about me, like in anime and stuff like that, and she just talks to me like, okay, yeah, that's fine, B. And I'm like, it, it is. Like, yeah. so, it's all right. right. See, the thing about Felicia, a lot of people don't know Felicia drive is like crazy. It is. Like you tell her, if you tell Felicia that she can't do it, she's gonna do it. Just times like, ten. Times ten. And like I said, I, I take my hat off to her. Like that's the hardest, one of the one of the hardest women I've ever met. Like she's really 
like she inspired me to do some stuff. So it's like she's real good people. Me too. She's going to be directing my um For the Love of Be Bad, which is a show that I have coming up soon. So let's talk about that. For okay. the Love of Be Bad. So why? what made you want to come up with the For the Love of Be Bad? Well, I'm looking for love. I got my Seriously, heart broken. Like, that's, you're looking for love like in the flesh, like in real life. In real so life. So there's not no script. No. You know, some people think some things just be script. No, this is you actually looking. Okay. So this Now, script. we do have an itinerary. If that counts, like, y'all need to be here on time. We're going to eat this because I like to snack. So we're going to eat this, go to this place, and it's going to be shot in Charleston. But I genuinely am looking for love because this business, you know, is very, very difficult. So the reason why I'm doing it on this platform is because I want people to already know, like, this is what I like to do. I like to be in front of the camera. I like to mix. I like to be in the entertainment business. So if you're going to date me, then you got to be a part of this, too. Right. So, and it's for guys and girls, so it's going to be really cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be for guys and girls. And girls. Oh, okay. So, yeah. it's, it's, look, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> so, um, are you, uh, so what was like, did, was it any heartbreak behind it or was it any type of like just over years of just going through different relationships that made you, you know, uh, or just the idea of let me use my talents and, you know, real life and just combine them all together and see what I, what, what happens. It's a combination of both. This latest heartbreak, it kind of like threw me all the way off because it was somebody that I genuinely like cared about and, I even try to put them into the business. You know what I'm saying? They were had no ties to the entertainment business. But me being the person I am, if I'm dating you, you know what I'm saying? I want to make sure you you can fit in somewhere in the entertainment business too so that it doesn't look like you getting left out. Right. So when they did what they did, basically they cheated on me with some old bitty. Like some some real old lady they was they used to talk to or whatever. And it, it messed me up. Um, but when I had a conversation with my best friend, she was like, well, you can't just give up on love because people get cheated on all the time. And I was like, no, this is it. Like Michael Jackson said, this is it. Rest his soul. But, um, she was like, you should just do a reality show and have people come on. And when I posted it on Facebook, I was like, if I had a show for the love of be bad, who would come? And then Felicia reached out. And she was like, let me direct it. And I was like, oh. Oh, yeah. I know it's gonna be lit oh, if yeah. Alicia gonna direct yeah, it. Yeah, Alicia direct it. Yeah, she gonna bring the people. Right. She gonna bring the people. Okay, okay. So, uh, you have some candidates yet? I do. Before I had like thirty people, and I had to narrow them down. I was shocked too. I was like, "Y'all wanna love me?" <laughs> as weird as I am. So I had to narrow it down to twenty, and then I look. And I sent them applications. I wanted them to tell me a little bit about them and stuff like that. So then I narrowed it down. I think now we have like 10, like five girls, five guys. All right. So let me ask you a question. Okay. okay. So for the love, for, for the love of uh, Be Bad. Okay. What are some things that you're looking for? And it's like, what if like, you, what if somebody win this might not have the look that you like? Or you already went through all that? Or like, you mean you, like, you gotta have a, cause some people, um, will want to, you know, some people look for a, a certain attraction. You might, you know, it might be a sexual attraction, whether a spiritual attraction or mentally, you know, whatever. But what are some things that you're looking for on the show to help you choose what you're looking for? I'm going to be honest and I don't know how this is going to sound, but I have to be attracted. You know what I'm saying? Like in some form or fashion, right. I want to be attracted. Um, they got to understand that I'm real, like, geeky. Real geeky. Even though I'm all bedazzled or whatever, I'm real, real geeky. So they have to be into some some type of cartoons, anime, something that we can watch and talk about together. Um, you watch sports? Yeah. So, you, so, sports. You, so if you watch anime, you watch sports with them? Yeah, I oh, would. Because my, my dad, I watch sports with him all the time. I even watch Western Cowboys and stuff like that with my dad. I can't watch that. I, I try to watch them. For I, real? <sighs> the uh, Ponderosa. Yes, like, I can't watch Matt them. Matt Dillon, Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke, yeah. I can't watch them. I, I mean, Why not? Okay, I grew up, you know, we used to go to my grandmother's house. Mm -hmm. And then they had this old TV and they could only get like three channels. But it was the boringest three channels ever. <laughs> they was like, 
G what, what what was GT GP PTV? It was something where they had like Mr. Rogers Neighborhood come on there. Now Mr. Rogers Neighborhood was. I now he's fucked with that, but you know it was Mr. Rogers, uh, Lamb Chops. Now let, this uh, is the lamb, song that never ends, and it goes on and on, my friend. Some people started singing, and I know when was it was. That's what it is, but um. Yeah, so and did that, and then these other two born ass say it was a station where the it was just soap operas. That's all it was. Like the as the world turned, as the world turned, God and light and shit like that. And, and these then, are the days of our lives. Yeah, and then it was like some TV land type shit before it was TV land. Then that's where they showed like Gilligan's Island. Uh, that was my shit too. Mash. That was my shit. Yeah, shit. Like I got that. old parents, so so you gotta think. I grew up. That's all I had to watch when I go over their house. Born and it was in black and white and she was in color. So mm, yeah, it's just yeah. like that. Eh, it grinds my fucking gears, but <laughs> other than that, you know. What but saying? them shows was kind of hitting though. In yeah, the, yeah. I know you watched in the heat of the night. I love fucking in the heat of the night. That's okay. my shit. In the heat of the night. Yeah, that's my yeah, man. And then you realize, like, being okay when we growing up, we watch these shows. We think they're like a big, 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 big thing. But then, you know, then once you start getting into, like you said, you start getting into the acting. Like, I direct movies and, and stuff like that. So, it's like, once you get behind the scenes of it and you see, like, okay, this All is... All this like, stuff is fake. Like... Fake. <laughs> right, it's fake. But then, it's like, okay, because we grew up... But even back then, like, the shows... Another reason I ain't watched a lot of Westerns, because a lot of them was racial profile type. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, that's another reason. You didn't see no black people really in those shows. Right. You really didn't. And if you did, it was... In jail or some shit. They was always in jail. Like, yeah. always in jail for some murder or kidnap or something or whatever. But even Andy Griffith, the Andy Griffith show. I was just watching it the other day. Yeah. That's a racial profile show. So it's yeah. like, you know, three, not Three's Company, but uh, All in the Family. Remember that show? Yeah, I ain't really mess with that. He that was racist. Was... The guy was racist. You know, so. But that's why, even Tom it's... and Jerry. Tom and Jerry was a racial profile cartoon. Why? Why do you say that? Yeah, okay, for one, you notice all the black people was either butlers or maids. You never see the black people face. You see white people face, but you never see the black people face. You're right. You only see like their aprons and and stuff like right, that. Right, because the lady she only had that. She was like, "No, Tom, you supposed to be blah 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 blah," and that's how I knew she was black. Right. Dang. Right. That's kind of messed you up. You can go back and look. In the history of Tom and Jerry, you never see black people's face. You see their legs and they they always got house shoes on. Like we lazy and you know, house shoes represents laziness. We always have house shoes on. I didn't notice that. Yeah. For me, Tom and Jerry was just like, you know, the when shit. you You know what I'm saying? When you on site, it was never no words. Right. It was just like on site. So that's the only thing. I guess I was focused on. Plus, I had a lot of, like, gangster cousins, right. so. <laughs> I mean, like, it's, it's like, because, you know, we grow up, like I said, you get older and you and you get more conscious of things. It right. You start to mind, things, like, notice even, stuff. Like, all the Walt Disney movies, they were racist. Absolutely. Every last one of them. And it's like, um, all the black people was either buzzards or they were monkeys. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they changed it up on Lion King because it was Africa. You couldn't use white people, faith, you know, voices on in Africa. Right. But did you know they weren't going to call it the Lion King at first? They were going to call it something else. Yeah, they were going to call it something else. Yeah, yeah. So, and, you know, go ahead the world. It's crazy. It but is. then we get it. It's like I said, so we get an entertainment that lets you know, like, okay, it's a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Right. You know what I'm saying? Politics. Politics. A lot of a lot. politics. A lot of politics. A lot of politics. Okay. So you, um, you be in the Columbia market. Right. Working with a lot of people in Columbia. So who pe- who are some people in Columbia that you work with? Well, first of all, shout out to Five Star Studio. Um, that's where I do most of like my shows and stuff at. Um, when you say work, what do you mean? Like the artists like, I work I, with? Like, I mean, from artists, from promotion, promoters, from companies, your company. I mean, but outside of your company. I'm talking just like other, well, other people. Like Basically, like a, who else have you done? You know, chopped it up with, it up with. Um, Cowboy Gotti, Ray G, Cusco the Fool, um, YBK Dollar, Slick G, um, Anna. She just dropped a, a song that's on one of that's gonna be on one of the Yeah, yeah, I, and um, I was in her video. I got her uh, 
uh, yeah, you are in the video. Um, Color sent me the video. Mm -hmm. Color sent me the video. Shout out to Color. He's Shout cool. out to Color. Shit. But yeah, he sent me the video. <laughs> he, he always. <laughs> Shit. But he sent me the video. Shout out long time coming. Um, but yeah, he um sent me the video and I heard that she's pretty good. She is. She's, she's really good. I, I was telling him I was looking for an R&B artist to like. Work with. You know, to like work with. Um, like put some time into. I have all the resources. I have the connections. So, I'm looking for an army artist. So, but he sent me a video. She sounded pretty dope. I haven't reached out to her yet because I don't want to make no decision yet. I just want to get. I like to follow people to see what you do, see if you fall off, right? See if you stay on. You know what I'm saying? See if they focused on their craft or they just, you know, just right. dropping little gems here right. and there. You know, some people just drop something like, oh. I think y'all suck at this big thing she finished. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, no, she's, she's really, she's, she's pretty really dope. dope. And she got a video that's going to drop August the 7th that I'm going to be in. You know, so, you know, check that out. So, what got you doing video fiction? Um, I want to say one time I, well, I was a model first. So, let me, screw, okay. let's go all the way back. Last year, I decided that I didn't want to just work for the company I work for. I wanted to branch off into the entertainment business. My Lucas is a singer. Um, DJ SNS is my um, brother in law, Conda, whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Back home in New York and Harlem. You know, the kid like it. Yeah. Okay. So um, I just was surrounded by different people that was doing stuff in the entertainment business. So first I started off modeling. When I was modeling, people would see my pictures. They would be like, oh, okay, you know what I'm saying? You ever thought about, you know, being in a video? And I was like, no, because I'm mad shy. You know what I'm saying? How would I even approach an artist? You know what I'm saying? So I started putting my cards and my information up. And I want to say the first, was it the first video? I don't want to lie. Was it the first video? Or the second video. I don't know, but shout out to Piezo because Piezo and Big Snacks, they had me in their video, um, Crime Pays, which was a really, really dope. I was real gangster. I had a ski mask on. I was like, yeah, what's up? I'm a thug, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so that was fun. And then I was in JL the Pharaoh's, um, video, Dumb. Um, and then after that, I just, different people was like, oh, I know you from somewhere. Oh, I seen you here. So it's like, once you get in the door and people see you, then you start linking with this person, that person, and that person. Right. So that's how it escalated from there. Right. Just from me modeling. You got to get, because you got to network. Like I said, they got to see your face. Right. And you got to go out there. So, so that's how you mostly got it out of it. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, um, what do you enjoy doing the most? Um, out of everything that you do? Um, I want to say I enjoy, it's a tie between being a video vixen and, Acting. I wouldn't say that. I would say between be, being a video vixen and just chopping up with people on my show on Beaming Nice Snacks. Yeah. Because... When I'm, you know, doing vixen work, you know, it's it's fun. You you on set, like you on camera, it's fun. And then when I'm chopping it up with people, we eating snacks, we talking about stuff. It it's like this. It just comes natural. It feels fun to me. So and it so would be a time. What made you come up with be midnight snacks? That's the, that's your uh, that's your interview part. Your interview uh, platform. Man. Right. So with be midnight snacks, it started off. Um, I was supposed to link with a bunch of other individuals, and they were kind of moving slow. You know how people say, "Oh yeah, let's do this. We're gonna do this," and then they never make a move. I'm the type of person. I'm like Felicia. Like, if I say I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna find a way to make this done. So when I first um, was trying to figure things out. We were doing the casting call for Columbia. So we did it at Five Star. So when we got there, that's when I officially, I mean, I knew everybody, like we knew each other because we all like linked, but we didn't really know each other, know each other. Doing the casting calls when everyone started to get more acquainted with each other. Because you know, it's two sides. It's the gangster side and the music side. I'm on the music side of Columbia. So, um, that's where I met Russian and I was telling him what I was trying to do. And he was like, well, you know, we have a podcast room upstairs that you can work in, saw the room. And I was like, okay, boom, got a location. Then I was thinking like, I'm always snacking. Why don't I have a snack show? You know, where people come, they showcase their talent. They showcase um, their business. You know, I even had people come from Augusta, like Loyal Demands, the one who made this, um, this bracelet, had him come out there. So it, it just, it was more on the lines of me snacking with people. My name is B and that's just how I came up with it. Cause food to me is the ingredient that bridges us together. So 
why not get on there and snack and talk about what you got going on on a platform where other people can see you and reach out to you okay Oh, that'd be pretty. I might, we might have to come out there and check it out. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the smoke cover and how that, that way we have, you know, we can eat good. <laughs> That's all. Okay. So basically, what what my show like? <sighs> you tell me what your favorite snack is. Hmm. What I do is I try to find a snack that's better than the one that you told me. So let's say you like, um, what is your favorite snack? I love snack to me is a uh, sushi. Sushi. Hmm, I don't know if I can top sushi. Yeah. You know what? I can top sushi. Huh? It's this Japanese ice cream called Mochito or Mochi. I had it. You already had it? Oh, yeah. You it's had it's all the flavors? All the flavors. I had strawberry. I had, I didn't like the chocolate. Did you have passion fruit? I didn't have passion fruit. So you didn't have all the flavors. Yeah. So see, when you come, I will bring the ice cream. I might probably keep it in the freezer. I'll bring in probably passion fruit. It's a dough with ice dragon cream in it, Dragon right? fruit. And, huh? It's a dough with ice cream in it, right? Mm. It's actually made out of rice. The whole thing is you rice. Know, it's rice yeah. But it looks like ice cream. And it, it I don't want to say it's healthy, but it's not like, it won't, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if you're, some people don't like to eat certain things or whatever. So it's, it's basically made out of rice. And it is so delicious. It is, good. it is good. So yeah, I would bring that, introduce you to that. You'd be like, oh, okay. So cool. <laughs> okay, I'll try to pass it through. I'll try the oven, but, but yeah, they're good. They're good. Great. They're good. Okay. All right. And what about drinks? You drink? I do. I drink Henny Patron or Champagne. I mostly like to drink Champagne. Like when I go to events and stuff, you'll always see me with like a bottle of Champagne in my hand. Wow, always. That's my thing. Now, if I'm, you know, they don't got Champagne, I'm like, all right, let me see. You got some Henny. You got some Patron in there. Oh, so you're a brown drinker. Mm. Are you more white? I want to say I'm a specific drinker, like Henny or Patron. Now, I'll try some other stuff, but specific Henny or Patron, I done mastered myself on Henny and Patron. So, so you know how your body is. Right. See, that's, see that's, I'm glad you say that because a lot of people were just, they like, they're basically free of it, like this freestyle stuff. They'll go to the club to drink any damn thing. No. See, and if you know your limit, you won't have any limitations. Right. Okay. You sound like you've been, you done been through it. So you got yeah, your I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I done met my limit, so therefore now I have no limitations. What's the worst you've been messed up that you remember? Hmm. It was two times. One in college and one recently. The one in college, I got so lit. And, like, it was, it was, I forgot who was performing. Like, my friend Lex, um, she's connected to whoever she's connected to. And we all just jumped, jumped in the car. We're like, okay, we lit. We about to go in the car. Now, this is a Thursday night. I got to be to school tomorrow morning. Mm. Took a quick nap from Sumter, South Carolina. And I woke up and I was in Atlanta. I was like, uh-uh, no. Ooh. I mean, we partied when we got out there. But then I was late coming back to school. And I was like, you know what? I'm never going to get that late because it's no way. Because I know it's a good three or four hour drive. What was I doing the whole time? Sleep. Sleep. Slump. So I was like, yeah. I mean, I was protected. It wasn't like nothing like that. But it was just the principle like, I can't come party with y'all. I have to. I'm still a kid. I have to go back to school tomorrow. Right. And then the one other recent time, I think I was super lit and I like professed my love to this random person. Like, well, he wasn't random. Somebody I, I do know and I, you know, whatever, but I was just like telling him I love them. And I was like, damn, I'm drunk. Um, yeah. That was, like, super embarrassing. Oh, and they told you everything about it? Yeah, they were, like, um, asking me, like, if I love them. And I was, like, no, like, that's random. And they are like, no, you're <laughs> random because you definitely said that the other day. And I was, like, oh, okay, well, then, you know, today's a new day, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's crazy. That's crazy. Right. So, how you, how you felt, like, I mean, so you wake up with the massive headaches or you just, you just wake no. up? No. So, you don't I have hangovers? No, I'm 30, so my body has, I've been partying, I'm from New York, I've been partying all my life, I slowed down partying when I came down here, but I still be turning up, so I don't do that, and then I remember one time, I was hanging with my gangster cousins, and they be drinking, um, Ace of Spade, they be drinking, drinking, like, and I felt like I was about to go to one time, and it was like, real gangsters don't throw up, and once they said that to me, I... 
<laughs> they was like, real gangsters don't throw up. And so I was like, when they said that to me, ever since then, like, I'd never thrown up since then. I want to say I was like 16, 17 drinking with them. Oh, I shouldn't say that right. Uh, hey, say you grown now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Grown now, but. So, once they told me that, from then on out, I did not throw up. Even when it'll be like right here on my shoulder, I'll be like, get off me, throw up. Get off me, throw up. Get out of my mind. And then I'll be good. <laughs> I'm for real. Like, that's stuck in my head. My cousin looking me in the eyes. He like, yeah, you gonna hang with the big dogs? Gangsters don't throw up. And I was just like, Okay, but can you tell my body that? Because um, it's not registering the gangster mentality right now. So, but, yeah. <laughs> I know you like, this girl is so crazy. Nah, it's good. It's good personality. It's good personality. Yeah, I'm ready to watch a show. Yay. So, who you got filming it? Um, uh, I had another individual um, filming it, but now I'm working with Rashid Ori. And he's he's pretty cool. Um, we're actually shooting season three, um, right now. I don't think I'm gonna release it until probably like September ish. Like so you're right already after. filming now. Yeah, for season three. Okay. Mm -hmm. So right now, the last episode on season two was with Ray G. Shout out to him. So um, yeah, right now we're just shooting, you know, season three, and then we're probably releasing in September. So. Okay. 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 That's dope. That's dope.